that it was an important one. It's the coronavirus quarantine favorites. I'm going to be sharing some things about the coronavirus, myself, how I'm doing, and uh, what we should all be doing, and some fun favorites of things that you can do from the comfort of your own home. And maybe there's some struggles that you're having during this time, and it's always good to have some resources. So that's what I'm going to be bringing to you today. So let's get started. So welcome to the coronavirus quarantine favorites on Friday. It is uh, the 20th today, and I'm going to be trying to push this podcast out today so that you have it for the weekend. Um, For some of us, it's the first weekend of being quarantined. Uh, For others, it may be um, week two. I believe for me, it's week two. And mostly because, and some of you don't know, and I'm going to share a little bit about my story before before I share these resources that I have for you, but um, I recently was hospitalized uh, for a for a bad infection that I got on my arm from a burn. So this was, I believe it was March 8th. Um, so back that up, let's see, um, uh, 7th, 6th, March 5th was the first confirmed case here in Middle Tennessee. And it just so happened to be in the uh, county that I live in. And so uh, that was our first case. And so no one was really panicking about it. But um, so I went about my day. And as you know, if you've been following our podcast, we, uh, Nashville had a terrible tornado that ripped through several neighborhoods here in the Nashville um, area and beyond. So it was like a E4 that touched down and and destroyed a lot of a lot a lot of businesses a lot of um, homes and things and very many lots of people were affected so on that Saturday before I I went into the hospital I was uh, buying things for uh, to donate as you've seen in some of my Instagram stories if you are following me on Instagram and um, just talked about um, you know. That Friday favorites, we did a whole section on um, the tornado and talked with someone that was affected by it. But um, all that to say, I that Saturday I was helping and delivering some um, donations and things. Meanwhile, my arm was just on fire. Small dime size uh, droplets of grease that fell fell on my arm as I was cooking. And I uh, didn't think anything about it, but at some point someone said, you got to con- continue to put moisture on it so it'll heal. So I started just doing that, but with Neosporin and uh, had an allergic reaction to Neosporin, which turned into uh, a really bad infection, which turned into cellulitis. Uh, as some of you know, cellulitis is very, um, it, it's, it's severe. And it's something you don't play around with. You could um, end up losing um, skin and an arm, whatever. So my doctor insisted that I go into the hospital to get an IV of antibiotics. So um, the antibiotics at home that I was taking was were not helping. So all that being said, um, decided to go in on Monday morning and stayed there till Tuesday evening. By Tuesday or by Monday evening... Um, things were looking a little bit scarier in my county and, uh, an admin person from the hospital came in and said, we've had a situation and we're asking all visitors to leave. So my husband had to leave. Um, he was able to get me some dinner, which I was like, I miss dinner. So I was sleeping and had not, um, recovered and had passed the deadline of getting any food or any dinner in the hospital that night. So he was going to go get something for me and bring it back. But when they kicked him out, they were like, well, you can just bring it to the door and we'll get it up to her. So (laughs) in walks the nurse and says, special delivery, you know, um, 
I think I probably should have tipped her um, like I do the Postmates. But anyway, so I was able to get some food, thank goodness. But um, my arm is healing very slowly, but surely. And uh, I'm still uh, some pain, a lot of itching to it, but it is, uh, I'm recovering. So I'm still on antibiotics, which is good. And um, I am just very thankful to be out of the hospital. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I was a little concerned and was ready to get out of there. Um, you know, at that point, all we had heard about was people being confined to um, and quarantined on a ship because of the virus. So I thought, well, if there's someone in the hospital, I don't want to be quarantined here if that's what they're going to do. So a lot of just a lot of, un, you know, a lot of questions, a lot of, you know, unanswered questions and the unknown. So it was a little scary, but, um, made it through and, um, back home and, and enjoying this, um, just time away from everything actually. So, but, so I wanted to come on today and talk a little bit about, you know, what we can be doing during this time. I know a lot of people are home and they're working from home. They're, you know, their kids are home from school, from preschool. And so lots of different things that um, are thrown at us all at once. I can't imagine uh, if this is you, a mom who, you know, is now working from home with all the kids at home. So I want to talk to you about some uh, favorites that I find are very helpful and um, especially for the young mom, the young families that have kids there that are looking for things to do. Uh, I'm also going to talk about things that you as um, the worker working from home can do as well. Um, an online, some online things that have been helpful, some spiritual things and some things that you could use in the kitchen, uh, just some, some great resources and things that you can do uh, to just occupy your mind and and get um, all that, you know, energy out. Uh, of course, people are still taking walks outside, which is very helpful and, and um, encouraged to, as long as you're not near anyone else, but your family members and just uh, keeping that six feet of social distancing. So that is what is uh, recommended, and I hope that you are following those um, tips. You know, there's just, there's over 10,000, um, I think it's up to 14,000 now of cases here in the United States, and that's just too many. Um, you know, more than, uh, than they need are like or more so than other cities is New York City, and my heart goes out to them. I know they live in uh, close quarters, and that may be why they are infecting each other, and things are just kind of a bit rampant there. So I really, really urge you to practice um, a self-quarantine, stay in place, stay at home. Uh, Don't go out unless you're going to get essentials like toilet paper and water and food. Um, I know that yesterday when I went to the grocery store, they were limiting uh, the amount of um, meats that you could buy. You could only get two, which is very helpful um, for those of us. And I think you could only get like one pack of toilet paper. I didn't get any. So I did find some paper towels, which is great. Today I found some um, Kleenex, which is wonderful. You know, just we're going to survive people. And if we need to, I know a um, Instagram person, that Instagram influencer, her name is Amber Allen. She is from the Fairly Local Family Instagram account. I'll put that below. I'll link her below. Uh in the show notes, but she cuts up, um, flannel shirts and makes, uh, in, in flannel fabrics and makes, um, toilet paper squares. So you can use those. I know that's extreme, but we're not going to die over this, over using, you know, washcloths or whatever to, um, to wipe ourselves. Use, you know, diaper wipes if you have those and throw them away. Don't you know, flush them down. You don't want 
um, any plumbing issues at this point. You know, that's one of the things that I've been praying over is all of my appliances. I don't want any dishwasher or uh, dishwasher's fine, but I don't want any washing machines to go or plumbing issues to happen. So those are some things that um, that I'm concerned about. So let's get started with uh, some, start with the kids, some fun things for the kids. Uh, Epic.com has like a reading uh, place where you can find books, uh, 30 days of free reading. So make sure you go on Epic.com. Also Khan Academy, if you are stuck and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't done third grade math in, you know, 20 years. So um, that uh, Khan Academy, it's K-A-H-N, is a great resource. It's on, I believe it's on YouTube. I think they have a website as well, but uh, check out Khan Academy for those things. YouTube is also, a, has a plethora of great resources for you to um help teach your kids maybe they can watch experiments that are happening um, and maybe they can do a report on it there's just a plethora of things out there for us to keep our kids occupied also um, i heard this morning about a, a website called big life journal it has a it's a journal that you can buy and kind of just journaling and helps for like um you know, growth and kids and helping them kind of expand their horizon. So I have not checked it out, but it looked interesting and I thought I would just throw that out there. So um, that is a good uh, place to start, just looking for some resources online that are free. And so check those out. Uh, lastly, with kids, um, well, I'll do two more things. Uh, one is YouTube Kids. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I think it's like a separate YouTube uh, account that you can get on. So check that out. But also my guest, my former guest, Annie Downs, Annie F. Downs, she is doing, uh, she's quarantined for 14 days, I believe. And um, she is doing uh, children, reading children's books on her Instagram account. So go on Annie F. Downs. Uh, you can also listen to her podcast that I had. It's uh, episode 49. Can't believe it's been that long, but episode 49 on Rising Stories podcast. And she's on there um, on her Instagram talking about uh, children's books and reading them. So check that out. Um, as far as like a spiritual component to all this, I want to just, again, shout out to my tried and true website which is pray as you go there are uh, it's a great app you can download i'm sorry i said website but it's an app you can download to your phone and it's like having a mini church it is such a great uh, resource and um, you really ought to check that out when you get a chance i also want to mention um, that this is a good time to to start incorporating a maybe a prayer morning prayer or meditation time that where you can just quiet your mind maybe you can go outside with a cup of coffee and sit on a porch or um, take a short walk and just meditate and pray you know breathing in and out fresh air is helpful and making sure that you are clearing your mind getting ready for the day getting ready to be inside or just do the things that you need to do that are so different than our normal routine so that would be i think really helpful to just do some breathing exercises to just kind of um, breathe in and out a few times and um, exhale inhale and maybe do a little bit of stretches and uh, which i'll talk about that in a little bit i'm going to talk about the uh, physical part of uh, being cooped up and being in quarantine, but um, I just thought about that to just to do a little bit of incorporate a little bit of reading, some meditation, maybe some prayer, whatever is uh, comfortable for you. But you know, use this time wisely. I think it would be a great uh, time to start incorporating that habit. I also want to talk about uh, homeschooling or just being you know this new role that you've been thrust into. Some of you that you have your child's 
work that you have to complete. So you're now kind of where you're wearing another hat and you are to help them complete their work, whether it's a packet that they picked up or if it's an online um, class and they have to do some homework from that. I just want to uh, suggest, make a couple of suggestions. One is that make a schedule, make a little bit of a block schedule for yourself and your child so that you know when you can do your work part and when you can do their school part, when you can, um, and also they need a schedule to kind of stick to so they know what to expect each day. It's always helpful when you have a schedule and and the kids know what to expect. They do that at school and it works perfectly, or it works, uh, maybe not perfectly, but it works, uh, I feel, beautifully uh, in school and can also do the same at home. I used it when I was homeschooling. I did certain times of the day, we did different things. I uh, made sure that the morning was devoted to the most important uh, subjects but with breaks in between. I also utilized my timer and made sure that they had uh, timed uh, exercises for each class. So I would say, you know, take 15 minutes and do this um, worksheet. Or I'm going to sit you down here, you're going to read this book for 30 minutes or, you know, 15 minutes. You know, I would not put a whole hour because um, I feel like un- unless they're in their teens, older teens, anything younger, it's just daunting to have a whole hour of something. So saying let's read for 30 minutes is plenty. So um, you can always add another 30 if they're avid readers or what have you, but if they're not, um, doing that would would be helpful. So next on the list, I want to talk about your sleep. Make sure that you're getting plenty of sleep. We need our sleep to fight off infectious diseases and we need our sleep to um, just to be rested, to be clear-minded, making good decisions. A lot of times our anxiety will hit when we are not feeling um, rested. And so I urge you to get plenty, plenty of sleep. Also, um, If you are into doing yoga, I know that one of my past uh, podcast guests, Emmy Singer, who is the owner of Inner Light Yoga here in Nashville, uh, if you go on and follow her on Instagram, she is doing, um, I believe it's every day, she's doing a little bit of a yoga class where you can be a part of her yoga class in her studio. So um, yeah, she was on my podcast which is uh episode it was episode 47 Uh, i will put a link to that podcast as well but also a link to her instagram would love for you to follow her and check out her yoga time that, that she is uh putting on instagram on the instagram live i think it's a great tool and a resource so check that out And now I want to talk about your pantries and food. We're all having to eat in. Uh, I know here in Nashville, all the restaurants have now closed for in-person dining. They are still, however, open for um, pickup and um, curbside delivery. So that's good. Um, I know it's keeping lots of jobs available and or jobs up and running, which is good too. But um, just in case you have just a random set of things that you have to choose from, from your pantry, and you can't find things like, for example, yesterday I went out looking for specifically for toilet paper and rice, and I wanted to buy um, some pasta my family eats a lot of pasta, I could only find like a small bag of rice and uh, no toilet paper and was able to get this like, you know, soup bones (laughs) as my meat. So what to do with just your random items? I 
checked it out and um, there is a couple of what there are a couple of websites that you can go on and insert the things that you have for example if you have some parmesan cheese if you have um, let's say you have mushrooms and you have um, eggs and you have you know biscuits or something or something random you can insert all of those items into like a uh, template of allrecipes.com and out will spit out a recipe that you can use so that's at allrecipes.com you know and uh there's different ones but recipe allrecipes.com is fabulous there's also recipe link Dot com can also uh, is also something that you can use and I want to shout out to my um, my Facebook group who it's we are part of a larger group of um, kind of I guess we're eating out of our pantries and um, we just get together on uh, we're on Facebook in a group in a private group and it's just great because we're always kind of checking in with each other and seeing what we're eating and um, what we're making for dinner and we get lots of great ideas so I urge you to kind of connect with people on Facebook or wherever your social media is and see what other people are cooking but check out the allrecipes.com and the recipe link for those random uh, items that you can make into something great to eat. And now I want to talk a little bit about uh, those of us who are working from home, which is a lot of us now. I want to talk about a few favorites, but I also want to share that it is very important to keep a routine as well. Um, I know I mentioned keeping a routine and having a block schedule for your kids, and I also think it's helpful for you to have a block schedule and have a um, a routine where you're getting up at the same time and you're, you know, showering as usual, getting, um, you know, fully dressed and not being in your PJs. It just gives you a little bit more of a feeling like you're, you are at work. And, uh, even though you're at home and in home office, a lot of people are switching around bedrooms and making makeshift offices, which is great. I love to hear your, um, what you guys are doing in that because I'd love to hear some ideas. I am working on my home office, but it has been a work in progress. I've been working on it for almost a year now. Just different things have come up and have taken me away from really attacking it. But um, I'd love to hear what you guys are doing and how you're improvising on your home offices. Uh, That being said, one of the things that I, one of the tools that I love to use is is Zoom. And I, uh, Zoom is a free online meeting um, website that you can invite other people to join you. And it, there is a free account and I believe they've limited it to 40 minutes, but you can do a lot in 40 minutes. And if you can find someone that has a paid account, just have them log in and do that meeting for you. A lot of people, as myself, we have the pro account, which um, you pay a little bit extra. I think it's $14.99 for a month of Zoom, and it's totally worth it if you are getting on Zoom and using that for your meetings as I am and connecting with your um, clients so or your coworkers. For meetings. So, so Zoom is great. I just finished writing an article, which I will link below um, that I shared on LinkedIn about how you can, uh, you know, just some of the things to do for, for Zoom, things that you can, you know, as we're finding ourselves in front of cameras or having to do Zoom calls, just, there were just these great, great little tips that I put together for people who are not used to being online and having uh, webinars or doing uh, online um, meetings, face-to-face meetings, virtual meetings, and that, um, and all of that. So check that out. It's, uh, I'll link it below the article that I wrote. The other thing is I want to mention a wonderful um, group and website called Focusmate. Focusmate is an online co-working um, I guess, platform. 
So, um, and it's free to most people, I believe. I think uh, they might have changed their things a little bit around since I joined, but you can uh, set up a time to work with someone. If you're in a group, you have kind of like unlimited access. You can set up a, like if I want to work and I want to do a co-working time, you can um, set up a time to to connect with another person and at that allotted time they will log in you will log in it's a little bit like zoom or like some type of google hangout and you'll see them but the thing about it is it's it's kind of like you're co-working with someone else but in the comfort of your own home or in your home office Um, what it does for me is that it keeps me accountable because I feel much more productive when I tell people and type it out. Um, I usually tell the person that I'm meeting, and it could be someone um, from India. It could be someone in Pakistan. It could be someone in um, South Africa. It doesn't matter, but it depends on who you choose to um, connect with. You make an appointment per se, and you pick a time slot and a person, and then that is your working buddy for that time. So um, you kind of do a little bit of an introduction, like, hey, what are you working on today? Where are you from? And then you just start working, and you keep the camera on. Um, You can mute so that you're not disturbing someone, so you could still um, be... You know, only you can mute yourself and they can't mute you. So when they when they want to speak to you, they can, but you're muted. Um, and then you just uh, share what you're working on. I always type it out in the chat box so that I feel like I can, you know, start checking things off. And it is amazing how much work I get done in that one hour. So I think it's like 50 minutes, but it seems like an hour. But in those 50 minutes, I get so much done. So that is um, one of the things that I love about working from home. Um, When I feel unproductive, I set up a focus mate meeting with someone and it helps me to just be accountable and much more productive in what I'm doing. So I am so glad you joined me. I hope that this is short-lived. I hope that you are getting lots done. I hope that you're being productive, but then I also hope that you are okay with not. So things can be um, just very up in the air for a lot of us. And we need to be kind to ourselves. We need to take one day at a time and just enjoy the family time, enjoy your time alone. And I hope that you get the things that you need to get done and I hope that everyone stays healthy and that no one puts anyone else in danger so be mindful of the laws the quarantines the uh, urgent messages from your government officials and stick to those rules please it's helping it really is helping everyone and just keep all of each other or and us in Italy and everyone else in your prayers and I hope that you have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining us on Rising Stories. Keep in touch and make sure you subscribe. Oh and I almost forgot we are sponsored by Audible so I'm going to put a link down below if you are uh, interested in a free 30-day trial. You can get a trial for free. You can get one book and two of uh, a like audible um, originals and it's a great great resource and a great way to pass the time thanks so much for joining and keep rising in your story